Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel for another furniture makeover. So in today's video, I'll be doing something a little bit different. Um, the Lord just really put it on my heart to talk to you guys and to just share my, my story, some of the hardships I've experienced along the way, and just to really just be transparent with you guys about the real, the real, the real, <laughs> let's just put it like that, the, the, the behind the scenes of my life. Um, I really want to encourage you guys. I really hope this blesses some of you. If you just really take the time to hear what I have to say, rather than focusing on what I'm doing, I think that you'll really be blessed by this video. But if you are curious about what I'm doing, just be sure to check out any one of my previously uploaded videos within the last maybe six months to a year. Um, because for the most part, my process hasn't changed. I always use the same primer, the same sandpaper grids, and all of that is all the same. So with that being said, if you're ready to jump into this conversation, keep watching and we're gonna get right into it. So my furniture flipping journey starts back in 2020 I want to say end of February, early March. Um, I had just gotten laid off from my job and I just knew it was time to, to go for it. I had been already doing a whole bunch of research and I was consumed with furniture flipping videos at that time and so I just knew it was time to go. Um, I didn't have any resources and so I had to reach out to a relative and see if I can borrow some money. So I took a $200 loan and I got started. I did my first two flips and they were terrible. Um, it was a dining set and I believe a dresser or maybe two dining, no, yeah, I think a dining set and a dresser. Nonetheless, I sell the pieces and they are like quality is just terrible. Um, but anyway, after I made the sale, I really didn't have the money to pay back the loan. And so a little bit of time goes by, a few months maybe. And I finally tell my husband like, we have to get creative because I can't keep putting this thing off. So we had a yard sale, I got the money and I was ready to give it to the person. <laughs> and the person said, instead, how about you just um, give my room a makeover? And so that's what I did and we called it even. And that's kind of where my story starts. And so, I, like I said, I didn't have, I didn't have anything really. I didn't have much equipment. I didn't have any money and one of the first things that happened is my sister in love actually bought me a respirator mask. And I was so blessed because if you go back and look at some of my older videos, you would have heard me say, I don't have the money for a mask right now, so I'm just gonna thug it out. And like sanding dust all in the footage and all in my lungs. <laughs> and so she did that and I was so grateful. And then uh, maybe like a week goes by or so, and my uncle shows up at my door and he has a respirator mask for me because I guess they both watched the video. And so I, I had told him that I, I didn't have the need because I just got one, but I was so grateful. And so he said, well, what do you have a need for? And so at that time I needed an electric sander. I literally had just broken the one that I had and um, I borrowed one from my dad and I used a Dollar Tree extension cord and broke that one. <laughs> And so he came and he brought me this Craftsman one that you see me using right here. And he purchased a warranty with it. And so um, if you shop at Lowe's, most of their handy tools come with a warranty, just a manufacturer warranty, and then you can buy an additional. He purchased um, an additional, I think three year warranty. But just recently, I actually went to go use it. And so I got this one, this is brand new. Um, and this was actually a part of the manufacturer warranty. So that worked really well. Um, they just needed a, a picture of my receipt and they sent it to my door. So this one, it worked so much better. And I kind of knew I needed one, but I was like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm overthinking things. Maybe I just don't remember because I could tell that the one that I was using wasn't as powerful as when I first got it. But I was like, I don't know. I mean, that was a long time ago. I don't want to abused the warranty and then something told me just to go ahead and do it and I'm so grateful best decision ever so that happened and then from there let's see where does where does the story go from here um yeah and so I guess you know I'm just at this point I'm just doing my YouTube thing and 
I'm flipping furniture like every day. I'm going really hard. Um, and I'm a little bit discouraged because I had been doing YouTube since 2016. And like I said, now it's 2020 and I'm just thinking in my head, like I'm thinking this, this is just going to take off. Um, <laughs> little did I know that wasn't my, my story. I see so many times people like on Instagram sharing, I made 127,000 my first year flipping furniture. That's not my testimony. <laughs> so it was a, a long, slow process. But in the beginning, I felt really discouraged because I guess I was doing a lot of comparing. Um, and, you know, it wasn't on purpose. It was just I was doing so much research at that time. So I was watching some of the furniture flipping greats and they were making it look super easy. And for some reason, it wasn't the case for me. I kept having like paint strokes or like you could see texture in my paint or, you know, sometimes the overspray would, would go crazy. And I just kept thinking to myself, like, I got to get this right. And so in the beginning, it was kind of motivational. But as months had passed, I would begin to get discouraged. Um, I remember I had like a garage full of stuff. If you go back in my older videos, you would see it looked like a junkyard. <laughs> and at that time, I was I was literally having my husband pick up any and everything I seen. It didn't have to make sense. I just if it was free, I wanted it. Um, and I remember there was this one time where we were just driving and he was like, did you see that? And I was like, no, I didn't see it. He's like, it was a dresser on the side of the road. So we went back for it and I should have used better judgment because first of all, the location was terrible. But secondly, the dresser was trashed. But in my head, I was like, this is the prize. Like, this is going to be the piece that puts me on the map. Do you see this thing? It looks crazy. When I transform it, like it's going to catch the attention of the people. I'm going to, this is the one I need. And so we bring it home and I'm really excited and I can't wait to get to the piece. But a week later, I started seeing roaches in the garage and I'm trying to figure it out, but it's not like it's not clicking until it until it clicks. And I realized I brought home something that was infested. And so I had a really hard time with this. Um, I was so discouraged because at this time, like I said, we didn't have money. And it, every single piece that I flipped was either me putting food on the table or me taking food off the table. Every dollar counted, every amount of supplies that I used, all of it counted. Um, the days that I spent working on pieces counted. I couldn't like gamble this thing. And so I brought home roaches and I was like devastated. Then I we tried to like de-escalate the situation on our own. We went to Lowe's and got some products to kind of diffuse the situation. We, we, we did all that we could do. We really couldn't even afford to do that, but we had no choice. And as time is going by, it's not getting better. Um, in fact, it's getting worse and it's, it's, it's rapid. Like first I would see two and three and then I'm seeing four and five and then, you know, it, and the number is increasing. And so I really freaked out when I seen two baby ones in our kitchen. And now I'm like, I'm going through so much in my mind. I can't sleep anymore um, because I'm afraid of bugs. And like, I'm thinking of just what are people thinking? Like, I'm so embarrassed. Like I always thought you had to be like a filthy, nasty person. And I never really knew how it worked, you know? And so my husband is really trying to just keep me calm and, and, and do his best to find a solution. And then, so he has a friend who works in the pest control industry and he offers to do a first time spray for free. And so that happens. And for a little while, I had some peace. I, I think a few weeks, the problem kind of was going away and then it came back. And so at that point, that's when I just got a random knock at the door and it was a pest control service and they they said we're willing to offer you our services at a discounted rate because your outside neighbors just signed up and now i'm really embarrassed because i i know they've probably put two and two together but i mean i had no choice but to order the service um, so now i'm thinking this is an extra bill every month that we already didn't have the money for but i don't have a choice and so we get through that and then I had moments where things would kind of get better. Um, 
I had a few wins, like I would sell a piece for my asking price and whenever that happened, it would just make my day. Um, but then, I guess we can kind of fast forward in the story. Um, so yeah, the furniture flipping stuff gets a little bit better, but then my husband finds out that what he's been working for for so many years is finally coming to pass. And that is ministry and pastoralship, if that's the right word. <laughs> And so um, he gets noticed that in a few weeks or in a month or so, he's going to become the assistant pastor. And we also get warning at the same time to be on guard and to get prepared for the test and the, ta the attacks that are going to come. And so I kind of know how this goes. I'm, I'm like, in my mind, I think I'm ready to pass these tests and to fight. <laughs> and then it happens. He gets ordained as the assistant pastor and the attacks come. And so when the attacks come, it, it was like, it was like a, the biggest fight. It was attacks from every side. Our oldest son decided he wanted to, to rebel and he decided to go live with his mom. Um, our, we had some checks that we were waiting on and they started to get held up. Um, at the time, we had just paid off one of our cars. And as soon as we paid it off, my husband said, I think we should sell it. I think, um, I, I feel like God is saying we need to sell it and invest into your business. And we also paid some bills. And I tried not to kind of come against it because I, I've done that so many times in the past and I've been wrong. So I was like, okay. You know, and also, too, I really wanted to pour into the business, and I thought it would be a good idea. So we, we sell the car, and now we're down to one car, but then shortly after we sold the last car, the truck starts to break down, and we decided we weren't going to put any more money into it because we had already put quite a bit of money into it. So now we're, we're really struggling to figure it out, and so we have to go get a new car. Now, we don't have, we're not set up to where we can just go to the lot and pick a car. <laughs> we have to go to like a corner lot that's like no credit, no problem, no down payment. We, we accept repossessions. Like we have to go to one of those lots. And we, I didn't feel comfortable with any of the ones in our, in our city. So we went to a city nearby and we find the car. And, you know, I'm not really a car person. I really don't care too much about cars. But my husband decided he wanted to get me the only car that I've ever been interested in. And so, you know, I was grateful. So we get the car, but I'm nervous because I don't want the note, you know. And um, we come home and a week later, the car starts to break down. So I'm like, okay, God, I trust you. And so we take it to the shop and it does have a warranty. So they were able to fix it under the warranty. Then another week goes by and now it's giving some other kind of issue. We take it back to the shop and the guy is kind of taking his time, sitting on it for like a week, not really getting back to us and being in communication with us. And we're kind of going back and forth for a lot, for a, a while. And finally, he's like, well, there's nothing wrong with your car. So we just go pick it up and we take it to the next shop in the next city over, um, a really close by city. And they're instantly they're helpful. They find the problem. They tell us, you know, we'll get on it like right now. And they, they reach out to the warranty company. And now, well, there's a clause in the warranty that if if there's any issues related to overheating, then the warranty is no longer valid. Now, the car wasn't overheating until just a few days ago. So now we're upset because <laughs> you get it. <laughs> you get the problem. You get you get the idea. So now we're upset. So anyways, we're going back and forth with the warranty company and they're telling us there's nothing they can do. So now we have a $6,000 bill that we can't afford to pay and we need to get the engine replaced. So while the car is in the shop, we have to borrow a car. And in the first time for maybe, what, the last eight, 10 years, my husband decided, <laughs> I wouldn't say he decided, my husband actually got in a fender bender car accident in the in the car that we're borrowing. And so now we have another bill to pay because we got to pay for this person's deductible. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's, it's really not funny. 
So I'm devastated. I'm like, money, our checks are being held up. You know, the cars are breaking down. Now we have these bills. And then I think it was a couple other things that happened. I know my, my, my husband's eye began to kind of swell up on him and close up. And then he was having some other issues that I'm not going to share. But I was like, it was just the hardest fight ever. And that's when I kind of, I, well, I wouldn't say at that time. At that time, I stood. But shortly after that, we went through some more attacks. And that's when I started to kind of fold. And I was like, God, where are you? You know, we've been serving you. We've been diligent. I've been trying to stand on truth. I've been walking by faith. I've been trying to be a light despite the tests and the trials. Like, I've been trying to live this thing out. I'm not just profess- professing it. I'm not just saying, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. No, I'm, I'm trying to live a life. And I couldn't understand why he was allowing so many attacks to come. And I was like, if, if this is the case, like, what, what is the point really of, of this? Why are we going through this? You know, why I can do bad by myself was kind of the heart that I started to take on. And so at some point, I went to my husband and I said, look, I think it's time I get a job. And he didn't agree. And he gave me like three reasons why. And I'll share. I'll share them with you. So reason number one, um, my heart posture wasn't right. And that wasn't his words exactly, but that's just how I'm going to say it. My heart posture wasn't right. And he was, he was correct. I, I had an attitude about it. It wasn't, well, let me just get a job to kind of help out. It was like a, well, if God's not going to do it, I'll do it. Let me go get a job. So for that reason, he was like, it's just, we need to just keep trusting God. Two, he felt like it was an opportunity for him to prove himself to God and to, to prove himself to me. Um, earlier in our marriage, he was really, really focused on ministry. And with good reason, he knew the assignment. Um, he knew the end goal, or I wouldn't say goal, but he knew the end would be him becoming the pastor of the church. So in the beginning of our marriage, a lot of his time was he just had to be diligent about ministry. And so I kind of, I, I held us down for a season. And so he was like, this is my opportunity to do my part and to prove to you and to God that I can do this for us. I can hold us down. And I'm so grateful that he had that mindset because it's really helped our marriage. I, I've i learned to trust him because there was a point in my life where I was like, one, I don't ever want to be broke. And two, I don't want to ever have to de- depend on a man. And I was walking out both of those scenarios, right? And there was a big part of me that had some trust issues. You know, I wondered if there was ever a day where he was just going to, like, quit his job or let us down. And so he's really proved himself. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, but the third reason was our, our transportation situation. We couldn't really figure out how we could make it work. Between him getting to work, me getting the kids to school and picked up from school, and getting to my job all at the same time because his work schedule was really was really inconsistent at that time so we just couldn't make it make sense so he had valid reasons and so I was like okay I'm gonna be still um and excuse me if my, if my words are coming out a little bit jumbled but that's what I did and then I, I just kind of was like God I need you to do something I need you to show me something I need something and that's when I felt like God was really dealing with me about spending more time in his word and just really getting closer to him and intimate with him and I needed to like really go harder go deeper and so that's around the time when I decided I needed to do this porch makeover now the video I I actually didn't like take action on that for a few months after I got the instruction so I think he started dealing with me back in like August or something I don't think I posted the video until December, Um, but yeah, the Lord was dealing with me about just like creating a a space for him and getting in in fellowship with him and things like that. And so one thing about me, I'm just be honest, I don't like to read. Okay. Like reading is my least favorite thing to do. I just despise reading, (laughs) whether it be a magazine, a newspaper, mail, I just, a text message. I, I don't like to read. I don't enjoy it. Um, But especially, I had a hard time reading the Bible, specifically the King James. And I just, 
I wrestled with that because I've been taught, you know, we study from the King James, King James, King James. And I said, God, my salvation depends on this. And so I'm just going to order a different translation. So I ordered this Bible. I think it's the NIV. Um, yeah, it, I think that's an NIV study Bible. And I did my porch makeover and I've really been utilizing that space. And I've really been sitting with God and just getting in his word. And it's taken me a long time to get through it, but I'm reading for understanding and I'm not reading for accomplishment. And so it's really been a blessing. I think that my heart posture has changed. My mindset has changed. God has shown me things and, and we're, we're in a much better space. And so in December, also in December, in addition to me creating the space, um, that's when my YouTube channel finally gets monetized. And I'm, I'm pretty excited, you know. It, like I said, I had been on this journey for, what, since 2016. And it was such a slow process. And I was consumed with the numbers for a long time. And I was really discouraged. So to finally see an accomplishment was such a blessing. Um, and then from there, in January, out of, out of nowhere, I posted a video and it goes viral. And when I tell you guys, a week later, I had, what, 5 million views and 40,000 followers? I was mind blown. Now, at this time, I'm not really, I'm not really consumed with the numbers, you know? At this time, he's done a, a work on my, on my heart. Um... And so, yes, it matters, you know, to be successful in this business and in this, in this industry. But it wasn't like, it wasn't like I depended on it. So the, you know, the numbers didn't make me sleep better. I didn't lose sleep behind not posting and algorithms and things like that like I would before. Um, I was just at a, at a peace about it. And it was like as if God was saying to me, like, you had to seek me. You had to learn to trust me first. I feel like, you know, he's a good father. He wants to bless us. He wants what's best for us. But can he trust us with it? And in that time, I felt like God was saying, I can do in seven days what you've been trying to do in seven years. Do you hear what I'm saying? I've been on this YouTube journey since 2016. And in seven days, he took my Instagram following from 1K to 40K. And the difference now is my hope isn't in it. You know, before I needed the numbers to validate my work. I needed the numbers to say, look, I am good at this. Look, my work is good because I got X amount of likes or I got X amount of views. And now, and I hope you guys can hear my heart. I appreciate the views. I appreciate the followers. But with or without them, I believe in my work. And I couldn't say that before. And it's, it's, to me, you know, it's unfortunate that I'm so inconsistent now that I have more of a following. But what I've learned in my down seasons is that I have to learn to appreciate the season that I'm in. And in that season where things were held up and I couldn't really move and there was nothing to do, I felt like God wanted me to rest. And I, instead, I was so busy stressing and so busy worrying and nothing went lacking. <laughs> I didn't miss a beat. So that time I wasted worrying could have been time spent resting. For so many years, for the first, I worked for 10 years straight from the time I, I turned 18. The first nine of those 10 years, I worked. I mean, I worked overtime. I took shifts. I never called in sick. I never called. I never took a vacation, like hardly. There were like maybe, I think I can think of one sick day on my first job and one vacation at the end of that first job. And outside of that, when I left that job, <laughs> I just had sick hours. Just And it was good because it was money. But it was because, like I said, I never wanted to be broke and I never wanted to de depend on any man. And so in that season where I was stressed out about things, that was my opportunity to rest because I believe what God is going to do is going to cause me to be really busy in the years to come. And um, 
I missed out on that season. And so right now where I'm in a season of, well, I don't have the money to flip right now. I'm just, I'm okay. Because I know when I do get to a point where I can, you know, I don't want to regret not taking advantage of this moment. So with all of that being said, I did want to share some of the things that I done, I've done um, while I've been on this kind of downtime. So one, I, I did apply for a grant. And then after I applied for that grant, I kind of, well, I applied for that grant a while back. But here recently, I actually was like, let me let me research grants. Let me figure out really what I all all that goes into it, because, you know, we think, you know, answer the question and you're good. No, I researched it here on YouTube and it takes so much more than that. So I said, OK, let me see what other options I have at this point. So I, I, I did try to apply, apply for a credit card um, that just didn't go the way I needed it to go. So um, I did also reach out to the SBDC, which is the Small Business Development Center. And I had like a phone interview. Um, I have another one scheduled as well. But I've been trying to be proactive about this this time. You know, what can I do in this time to make things at least figure out what my options are? Um, and the conclusion that I've come to <laughs> is that I probably just need to get a job now. And so my husband and I actually kind of brought the situation back up. We talked about it again. And now we feel like we're at a season where I can do that. My heart posture has changed. His work schedule has changed. Um, and it just, it fits more now than it did before. Now, before, like I said, it didn't make sense for the reasons that I shared. But now we can work this out. So I did apply for a couple of jobs, part-time, of course. I just want a few hours to kind of really help me provide um, an income for supplies. So that's what I've done. If I can get to a place where I can post one video a week, I think I'll begin to see an income here from YouTube. I did get my first YouTube check. <laughs> um, it was very small, very small, but it was a start. So I'm grateful. Um, and yeah, I just wanted you guys to know that I'm, I'm doing well. I'm healthy um, and I am trying to be proactive in this season. So I hope you guys are encouraged by my story. I hope I shared it well. I kind of gave you, uh, you guys the gist of it. I feel like there was so much more that happened in between. Um, but I've shared enough, I think, to make the story come together. And I would love to just kind of know your story and have a conversation with you guys down below. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And here in a second, we're going to get into the after of this makeover.